In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. As I was thinking about this Easter, I could not help but recall three years ago, Patrick, when we were just a few of us here in the church and trying to offer, to offer Easter worship amidst the crisis of COVID. And here we are today. As I look out, I can feel the resurrection in the presence of so many of you. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. The resurrection of Jesus is central to our faith. As Christians, everything we do, our preaching, our teaching, our testimony, even our faith, even our faith, is informed by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. In today's gospel, according to John, we find Mary Magdalene's encounter with the risen Lord. Mary Magdalene has been there. She's been there. She has witnessed Jesus' death on the cross. She has been present at Jesus' burial in the tomb. John tells us that early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. In seeing this, Mary is astounded and disturbed. Who could have done this? Who could have taken the body of Jesus? In Matthew's version of the story, we are told that the authorities had sealed the stone in place. They had placed trustworthy guards to guard the tomb to ensure that no one would steal Jesus' body. Mary Magdalene runs as fast as she could to find Simon Peter and the other disciple that Jesus loved. They too found the tomb empty. The disciple that Jesus loved notices that the clothes that were on Jesus when he was buried were neatly arranged and folded up inside the tomb. No grave robbers would take their time to do such a thing. Peter and the beloved disciple left, but they do not understand the significance of what's going on. They don't understand how the missing body of Jesus fits into God's purpose. God's purpose. They have not yet fully received the Holy Spirit. But Mary Magdalene's spirit, her spirit is not at peace. She's still thinking that Jesus' body has been moved. And so she goes back to the cemetery. She is grieving in her grief, she sees two angels dressed in white. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have led him. 
When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she does not know that it is Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me. Tell me where you have led him, and I will take him away. Then Jesus said to her, Mary. Mary. You see, Jesus is the good shepherd who calls his sheep by what? By name. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And his sheep listens to his what? To his voice. His sheep listens to his voice. Mary Magdalene recognizes Jesus when he calls her by name. But something has changed. Jesus says, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. You see, they are now in a new relationship. To John the Evangelist, Jesus' crucifixion, resurrection, exaltation, and return to his heavenly glory, that means his ascension, all of that are parts of a single event. One single event. Jesus commissions Mary Magdalene to go to his brothers, to go to his sisters, and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. And she witnessed to everything Jesus told her. My sisters, my brothers, Jesus is alive. Amen? Amen? Jesus is alive. And so we claim faith. We claim faith. In Jesus, thanks to the women and men who witnessed to Jesus' resurrection. But that's not all. We claim faith in Jesus on the backs of the women and men who have labored in the vineyard and then passed on the faith from generation to generation. You know them. We claim faith in Jesus thanks to our parents and grandparents and family members and the community that raised us who did whatever it took to maintain their faith and pass those traditions to us and to lead us on the right path. We claim faith in Jesus on the witness of you, of you, sitting here this morning, wearing your faith on your sleeve and drawing those whom you know and work with. Draw them to know Jesus. Draw them into your faith. We claim faith in Jesus thanks to the faithful ministry of the church which is sustained by the scriptures, by the word of God. The apostle Peter says, we are witnesses to all that Jesus did both in Judea 
and in Jerusalem. So what happened in Jerusalem? In Jerusalem, Jesus was put to death, crucified on a cross. Jesus' message of justice, love, kindness, was a threat to those in power. This message is still a threat in our world today. As a result, as a result of Jesus' message of love, they hung him on a tree. On the cross, Jesus bled and died for the sins of the world. The apostle Peter said, Jesus did not stay in the tomb. Death does not have the last word. Thanks be to God. God raised Jesus from the dead. Peter says, God allowed Jesus to appear not to all the people, but to us, who were chosen by God as witnesses. Peter testified that he and the other witnesses ate and drank with Jesus after he rose from the dead. Peter testified that Jesus commissioned the disciples to preach the gospel to the people. Jesus commanded them and us to testify that Jesus is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. In the name of Jesus, everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins. Thanks be to God. We all have that moment, that moment that we regret. We say something in anger to someone we love, or we speak in frustration to a work colleague, and we regret it. We might agonize about it and eventually apologize. And what happens? Have you had that moment when the person you hurt goes out of their way to let you know that it's all good? It's all good. I know you didn't mean it. I forgive you. And you can feel that person is not just saying it, but they really mean it. It's the greatest gift. It's the greatest gift. Too often, I believe we take the gift of God's forgiveness in our lives too lightly. We take it for granted. God's forgiveness, my brothers and sisters, is the greatest gift that anyone can receive. On Good Friday, you were buried with Christ in his death. Now that Jesus is resurrected, the question becomes, have you been raised with Jesus Christ? In the passage from Colossians, Paul tells us, if you have been raised with Christ, seek, seek the things that are above. It's not enough to believe that Jesus is alive. It's not enough to believe that Jesus is resurrected. The real question is, what will you do to witness to the resurrection? The answer is, seek the things that are above. What does that mean? It means you must have a personal relationship with Jesus. You do that by maintaining a life of daily prayer, studying and meditating on the word of God. It means maintaining a life of worship. It means practicing, practicing love, 
Love is something that we practice, not something that we say. Practice love. Practice compassion. Practice kindness. Practice forgiveness daily. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive through you and me. Death does not have the last word in Jesus' life and in your life and in the lives of our loved ones who have gone before us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he lives, we are now connected to the source of life. Because Jesus lives, we are now connected to God through the Holy Spirit dwelling in our hearts. What we do with that connection is up to you and me. William Anderson writes, The empty tomb points beyond itself to new life. A person once received an Easter card, which had written on the front, May you always find empty tombs in your life. And on the inside were the words, And may you live a new life of resurrection as Jesus did. The card was saying that in the darkest moments of a person's life, the resurrected Christ will always be present to help us because Jesus is not in the tomb. Rather, Jesus' mission continues in the world through his life, death, resurrection, and ascension, Jesus has joined heaven and earth. He experienced our human condition, and in his exaltation, he carries that experience with him. He, as God, certainly could experience our human condition without becoming human. But for us, he fully entered our humanity. Through his life, he teaches us to live a life dedicated to love of God and neighbor. Through his death, he teaches us to trust the Lord as we abandon our lives into God's hands. Through his resurrection, he offers us hope for our own resurrection, inviting and encouraging us to live for eternal life with him. And through his exaltation, he links our humanity with his divinity and raises our humanity to a new and higher level. To God be the glory. My sisters and brothers, as you continue on your faith journey, look at these days as your first days, your first days. Living into the source of your strength. Jesus is the source of your strength. Jesus is the center of your life. In moments of joy, in moments of sadness, Jesus is your strength. Jesus is your Savior and your guide. The resurrection is here. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen.